सहनावतु सहना भुन सह वीर करवाहै तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिदावहै शांति 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 मे द लॉर्ड प्रोटेक्टस मे ही नरिशस मे वी अक्वायर द कैपेसिटी टू स्टडी एंड अंडरस्टैंड द स्क्रिप्चर्स मे अवर स्टडी बी ब्रिलियंट एंड मे वी नॉट कैविल एट ईच अदर ओम पीस 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 एंड टू सो Dear brothers and sisters, loving Sai Ram to all of you, we welcome all of you for the satsang of Sri Sat Sai Baba Center of Arcadia, and we are continuing our study circle on Gita Vahini. And um, we are going to start. If you have a book, it is on the page fifteen. Last paragraph starts. Arjuna asks Krishna, "O oh, Madhusudana, listen to my words." If you are online version, it should be starting on page fourteen, the first paragraph. Just I will briefly uh, summarize what we discussed uh, last week. So, Arjuna, you know, such a great hero and warrior, who had powerful weapons like Pashupatastra. he was dispirited whenever even a great people when they are go through challenges difficulties in the brahma when they have delusion they get dispirited so he throws away his bow and arrow and says i am not going to fight in life sometimes when you have challenges people sometimes fight along until the end some people give away so this man is doing that even though he was such a um, great hero then lord Krishna is reminding him of his prowess, of his power. Hey, you had the Pashupata Astra, which you got it from Lord Shiva, and also he reminded. So one one is you have got strength. Second is in life we have temptations, as he said, two great temptations, as Sri Ramakrishna said, Kamini Kanchana, that is lust and greed. So when he was tempted by the celestial damsel Urvasi. he was not tempted so he just withdrew the temptation but then in the turn what happened that lady cursed him you will become a eunuch so even then he didn't uh, get perturbed you see that whatever happens happens by god's will and he said is good so that helped him when they were in exile in what is called ajnata vasa they had to be in phase of incognito so he had to Not be a Arjuna, then they will recognize again. He has to repeat this twelve years in the forest. So, so that time he was in incognito. He was like a eunuch trying to teach the dancing to the uh, royal princess. So that helped him. So even though it is a curse, it was a blessing. It guided. So in life also, what Swami is telling is even sometimes something is looks curse. It is a blessing. So the main mantra is. whatever happens happens by god's will first we should whatever happens happens by god's will as they say even an ant won't bite you without god's will shri di baba says uh, swami says and quran also says even a dry leaf dry leaf can fall even a dry leaf won't fall without the allah's will and in the bible it is said even a hair and you can not turn black or gray without god's will i know now people color and they do the but naturally so and then transplantation of hair but the, all these things is uh, god's will 
So everything is whatever happens, we should have, then we are always contained, never complain. I don't know, you have a beautiful story, Swami said, I don't know how many of you don't know, I know, some of you know, I know that. The king, a minister, and the cut finger. How many don't know that story? If you don't know, then I will tell. Otherwise, we'll move on. You don't know? So, well, anybody else doesn't know? Okay, so there was this king and a minister. This minister used to always say, says, whatever happens, happens by God's will in this for his good. So, the king was happy because nothing happened to him. So, one day, his, he was cutting a fruit, he had said to be, and he cut his finger. It was bleeding. And instead of sympathy, he says, that is for your good. The king got mad. Are you crazy? It is my good cutting. I cutting the finger, bleeding and pain. Then put this guy in the jail. So he put his minister in the jail. So usually both of them go together for hunting to the forest because kings, but they enjoy the sport is hunting. So they went there in the king, and suddenly he lost his way. And then some tribal people saw him. Hey, this guy is good. They caught hold of him, took the chief of the tribe tribal chief, they took him. So because they were doing a yajna, so you know, they, and the yajna, those traditions is they give sacrifices. Even now, some temples, even Kali temple recently said they cut the goats, they cut the animals, sacrifice. even now some temples, they do that. But there, the best is, best animal is human being. So they say, if you give human being, you will get even better result. So they cut, this guy is very good, let us get, take this. And tribal chief was happy because he's handsome, he's king, royalty, and the mother will be very pleased with the sacrifice because you give be best of food or best um, fruit you offer God. So this is good. Then they went to him for a ceremonial bath before offer. They had to clean him up, give a shower, everything. And then they saw his finger was cut. They said, this is, you can't offer something which is bad. So they take, told, he says, no, 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 we can't use this guy. Just let him go. So they were so relieved, my God, they left him because he has that cut. Then he says he remembered his minister's words. Whatever happens, happens by God's will and for my good. My God, my life is saved. Otherwise, he would have gone. They would have cut him off. So then when he went back, he told the minister, you are right. It is for my good. Otherwise, I would have been gone. But I have one question. How is it good for you to be in the jail? Because it is good. If you are in the jail, that's not good. It is in the jail. If not, I would have been with you. And I would not. I don't have a cut finger. I'm a perfect candidate. They will, shh, I'm gone. Because I'm in the jail, I, I was saved. So so for him, it was good to be have cut in there. And for him, to be in the jail is good. So whatever ultimately God has planned, has the design. So that is a lesson to learn. So this is what Arjuna is telling. So just leave it to God. That is one um, lesson. And then... Lord Krishna uses very harsh words, kasmalamidam, asargvam, akirtikaram. That means, because when you are there, otherwise this guy is dull, Thomas, that I want to give up everything. He was not uh, interested to fight. That is the inertia, apathy. So to stimulate him, he uses strong words, Krishna, so that he gets energized. He has royal blood, it boils. So he says, okay, I will do that from Thomas sake, it is better to Rajasik, be always active. That is very important. But next stage is you should go to Sattvic. Again, tranquil, serene state. But when ultimate thing is you should go to beyond the three gunas, beyond the Tamas, Rajas, and Sattvic. That is why Lord Krishna says in second chapter, Traigunya Vishaya Veda. These Vedas are in the realm of three gunas. Nistrai gunyam bhava arjuna. Arjuna, your goal is to go beyond the three gunas. People say Veda chanting, all those are good. They are karma kanda, bhakti kanda. But you said ultimate goal is beyond the three. Beyond this, tamas. So because all the, uh, the Veda stock, you do this worship to this God, it will happen to you. You will get the children, you will get the progeny, you will get the wealth, you will get name, fame. But ultimate is you should go beyond the three gunas. Like beautifully Vivekananda said, Thomas Guna is like an iron chain, it binds you. Rajo Guna is like a silver chain, that also binds myself. And Sattva Guna is like a gold chain. Chain is a chain, it binds you. But ultimately, you should be chainless. 
so that you are free. Then that happens only when you are beyond the three gunas. And beautifully, Lord Krishna describes that in chapter 14 called Gunatraya Vibhaga Yoga. People who are interested, you can read that from Shloka 22nd to 25th. There are four shlokas. How does a man who transcends these three gunas, how does he behave? He beautifully uh, describes that. So he wants Arjuna, but first you need to go to stepwise. From primary school, you can't go to a PhD. First you have to finish high school, college, degree, and then PhD. Same thing, first instead of being tamasic, be active, do something, good work you, for your society, family. Then beyond that, then you should go to Sattvic, and then finally go beyond the three gunas. So that is where we ended. So where we say he was uh, encouraging him to be man of action. So now we'll start on page um, uh, 15 here, last paragraph, on page 14 online, first paragraph. Arjuna asks Krishna, O Madhusudana, listen to my words. Those who are in the forefront of the battle line are all worthy of worship. The great Bhishma took care of us when we lost our father and brought us up from childhood and shaped us into what we are. He is as a father to us, the grand old man of our clan. And what shall I say of Drona? He loved me more than he loved his own son Aswatthama. I had all his love. He is the guru who through that love took me as his favorite disciple and made me into the bowman that I am. Do you want me now to use the skill he taught to overthrow him? Is it right for a son of Bharat to do such a thing? In, a bat in battle, we have to kill our enemies, is it not? Or can we fight with fathers and teachers who deserve reverence? You say that heaven can be won by battle. I cannot realize how heaven can be got through the killing of these revered gurus. If this idea spreads, few gurus can survive. Whatever you might say, let me tell you this. Rather than earn happiness and power through these means, I feel it is better to live on arms collected from door to door. Food won through killing such men is mixed with their blood and I would prefer a meal got through beggary. Well, even if I give up all these qualms and fight, how can victory be counted upon? Expecting victory to come to us, how can I resolve to slaughter these elders and lose both worlds? If by chance they win, then beggary is inevitable. If we win, it is as bad as losing. For of what gain is victory if the price we pay is the destruction of kith and kin? We gain but inconsolable grief for the rest of life. Krishna. I am at a loss to solve this problem. My intelligence has deserted me. My nature has undergone a vast change. I do not know why. I cannot distinguish between right and wrong, dharma and adharma and righteousness. You finish it up because these are all the same concept, same theme. So it will yeah. okay. My Kshatriya warrior blood 
rises up in protest when you prod it so. It is pushing me forward into battle. Fear of becoming the murderer of these reverend elders is pulling me back. I am helpless. As you are guiding this chariot, guide me also and show me the way. Moreover, I am no more concerned with worldly prosperity. I crave for spiritual progress only, he said. From that moment, Krishna became the guru and, Arjun, and Arjuna the disciple. Arjuna prayed for that status and got it. Until Arjuna accepted this attitude of a learner, his heart was filled with egoism and weakness. The hero had become a zero. He had taken a position the very opposite of that taken up by Krishna. The reason for all this, if you carefully study, the situation is nothing but egoism. Prema, love, is the viewpoint of Krishna and Brahma, delusion of Arjuna. He suffered from agony because of that. Then he realized that egoism led only to further ignorance and confusion. He surrendered his judgment to the Lord and saved himself. He said he, has, he was but an instrument in the hands of the Lord. Recognizing one's error is the first excellence of a good disciple. It is the beginning of wisdom. Only the foolish will feel they know all and suffer from the dire disease of a swollen head. So in this, uh, the first thing to note is, Arjuna is very clear, he says, I, am, I don't know what is right and what is wrong. So what is right or what is wrong? So he asks Lord Krishna to instruct him, to teach him, so that he knows what is right and what is wrong. The prob the that is that is uh, happens for many of us in many situations, work or many places. We come into a situation: what is right, what is wrong, how we want to proceed forward, even simple things. But that's one of the things that we are going to face and a challenge. But as long as we, we feel we always have that faith, the Lord is with us all the time, that's what we need to have, that faith. The Swami has told us again and again in most of the discourses, before you, front of you, side you, he's, he's always there with us. That faith we should have and allow him to instruct us and then we do what he has told, then we'll be saved. Same like what Arjuna did. Um, there's one thing that uh, tells us that before, uh, very simply, you know, Arjuna was, if he says that he, do, he doesn't want to kill, the very fact that he doesn't want to kill and he wants to go back and the other other side of the party, the Kauravas, they're not going to be simply seeing him going around, going back. They're going to tease him and all kinds of things. Then automatically he'll take the bow and come back and fight because his nature is to defend and fight and his nature is to fight for dharma. So he forgot what is dharma and so anyway that's the reason this whole thing happens and we are also in the same stage sometimes we don't know what is right and what is wrong but we have to surrender to the Lord. Yeah, so this is where the whole thing Arjuna because he is deluded, he is confused like in life a lot of us sometimes 
different situation. Some things like uh, clear, black and white is right or wrong, but sometimes things are not clear, grays, you don't know, you are confused. So he was confused, but he said that later on, in the beginning, he was trying to justify his actions. We always, when you don't want to face, oh, you know, this is it, you talk about high Vedanta and try to justify your actions, even when you are supporting Adharma. And you know something, Adharma, no, no, if you do that, because you have selfish agenda, so you should have clarity, something Adharma, Lord is showing, you just have to have clarity. But this guy is trying to justify actions. Oh, how can I kill my grandfather? How can I kill my teacher? How can I kill my cousins? Because of his attachment. That is what the thing. That is called, Swami is saying, Arjuna had a Brahma. Brahma means confusion. But so, but then he realized, he went on telling, and Lord Krishna smiling and quietly listening. Okay, go on, go on. Then when he realized his mistake, so first thing he says, Lord, I am dharma samudha chetas. That means, I am really don't know what is dharma and dharma. He says, just he accepts his mistake. He accepts his deficiency. In life, first we need to accept that we, we don't know. People will try to justify, show off. So say, yeah, I don't know. Please tell me. And second thing he says is, shishya steyaham. I am your disciple. Till then, because he was his brother-in-law. He treated him as brother-in-law, joking with him. Then he was his friend, like Saka, always Arjuna and Krishna acted like Saka. So first time he says, I am your disciple. Because the relation between a disciple and guru is real good disciple, implicitly, completely obeys the command of the guru. He won't argue why this. Whatever guru says, you completely follow. You don't reason or question. We have that. So there's another thing he says. And first is confusion. I accept his problem. Second thing is, it is, I am your disciple. She says, Teaham. Then he says, Tvam Prapanna. I am just surrendered to you. So in life, first you need to realize the problem. Then you become the disciple, implicitly follow your teacher, our Lord. And then you completely surrender to him. And then, what does he say? Shadimam. Shadimam means command me. He doesn't say instruct me. Shadimam means give your command, divine command. So then I will implicitly follow. So when God gives the command and you follow, then you can become a hero. But you don't follow, as he said, you will become a zero. So with God, one that is beautifully said, Sri Ramakrishna and Swami also, when you are God, you become a hero. If without God, you are a zero. Beautiful example is you have a zero, you have another zero, you have another zero, like your family is a zero, your bank balance is a zero, your job is a zero, your name and fame is a zero. What happens? How many zeros? What, the, what is the value? Zero. But you put one in front of it. One is God. Then six zeros, what happens? It becomes million, tri billion, trillion. So without God, zeros are zero. Any number of zeros is zero. But when you have God in life, everything has a value. That is why we should give highest priority to God in life then everything is value. That is why he says, this is another important lesson. Because what Arjuna was going in is not real detachment. Vairagya means he says, oh, I don't want this. Let me not fight. I want to go to the forest, do contemplation. Who wants this war, bloodshed? That is called, a lot of people go through. There are two kinds in scripture said. One is called Smeshana Vairagyam. Another is called Prasuti Vairagyam. That means, Smeshana Vairagya means somebody, your friend or family member dies. You go to the funeral rites, everybody talks. Uh, this life is temporary. We are today, we are gone. So it will last for a few hours or maybe a few days in some people. But after all, again, forget the same old uh, life. But people who are really like Lord Buddha saw only one time. He saw death, saw old age and sickness. Right away, he got this passion. So you need a mature soul. So whereas most of us, you see that temporarily you get for a few days, few hours, few day, weeks, but it should be all the time. And second, Prasuti Vairagyam, woman who gives birth to a baby, it has so much pain. And nowadays, they make it less painful with this epidural blocks and all that. But in general, it is still painful. Oh, I don't want to go through this anymore, no more. And then they will have 
another baby after one, one year, two years, another, like that. They forget it because that is the power of maya. When you go through that, you see it's temporary renunciation, but real thing is like Lord Buddha. People, this life is temporary, not permanent. Let us go to the highest goal, like Janaka, the Ramana Maharshi, Arabindo, and Nisargadatta Maharaj, all great souls, they see the no value because life is temporary and a lot of grief. So what is the way to guess? When you renounce, you are getting the highest. Like, like uh, Swami Vivekananda, remember a story, he went to Calcutta after he came back from America, and then there was a rich man, very wealthy man in Calcutta, he fell at his feet. You know, Swami, you are a great man, because he was very intelligent, he was successful, he renounced everything with akar robe walking, spreading the message of God. You are great, you renounced. No, 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 I have to fall at your feet. I, you run, renounced. He said, what people didn't understand. I renounced this world, which is a lot of tinsel trash, for the highest God, which is eternal bliss. You renounce that eternal bliss for the sake of few dollars and uh, thing, material possession. So you, when you renounce the higher thing, you, you, you give up a hundred dollars, is not big, with a million dollars, then it's great worth it. You gave away so much. Similarly, you gave the highest thing for the sake of little thing. But as I gave away little things for the high, sake of highest. So the real smart, like Lord Buddha, he renounced. There are so many kings came and gone. Does anybody remember their name? But Lord Buddha, millions of people around the world adored him, adore him, or will adore him because he was sacrificed for the sake of humanity. So what is, that is why it's called Thyage Naike Amrutattva Manasi. Only by renunciation you get immortality. So that is what the message. So temporarily he got the temporary detachment which is not good. Then when he realized his mistake and said, Lord, I don't know what is not good and not is good. So you give your command and I will implicitly surrender to you. Then the Lord uh, took over. So that is what, till then, he just listened because God doesn't force his way. So he says, even after selling the whole Gita, this is a famous, I tell everybody, for in the family, whether it's in the organization, in the work, if Lord Krishna tells the whole 18 chapters. And at the end, do you know what he says? I have to tell what all I told you. Now, yathe chesi tathakuru, he says. Do as you please. If he wants, he can say, hey, if you don't do, I'll cut off your head. He has Sudarshan Chakra. He can force. God has all the power. But he, still he doesn't say that. I told you my duty, what is good. Now you do what you want. Same thing in life, whether children, spouse, or work. Our duty, tell them what is good. That is our duty. But don't try to force things on people. That is the lesson you learn from Lord Krishna. You know, Swami was like that always. I remember one of our, uh, Dr. Venkatraman, he came here. So he was taking uh, Dr. Venkatraman with him to Bombay and Delhi. He was ready. Then Swami calls his wife, he says, can I take him? Is, is, do you give permission? He says, Swami, if you are the Lord, why do you ask? So just shows the etiquette. You don't just take things granted. You ask uh, the people just before, instead of taking granted. That is what? The Lord shows by example. So that is good. So next, you continue. Any questions? Anand? Yeah, anybody has any questions or comments? If you have, we have, we'll answer. If not, continue. Well, there's a question here. It's Aravind. Beautiful and inspiring introduction reminded me of how Swami would say the mantra for surrender is Idina Manchi Kosame. Keep telling this mantra when either good or bad happens. It helps it helps you remain grounded in success and keep a calm mind in failure. So he's sharing that. So he's making comments. Yes. So he's making what Swami said is yeah, that is what Idina Manchi Kosame that means this is for my good. And another thing Swami used to say is, Idi epudu undadu. First is, Idi na manchikosam. This is for my good, this is my good. Another thing is, Idi epudu undadu. 
there is a beautiful incident that also Swami said. These Pandavas, you know, they were uh, wonderful people, righteous people, and they were tortured by these Kauravas, bad guys. Things like happens even now in the world. Good people are always put to uh, subject to humiliation, torture, but we have to go, they go through that ultimately for the good. Ultimately, dharma wins, truth wins. So, when they were going in exile, so they went through a lot of trouble. Kunti mother was sad. Then they give a mantra. So give us some message and says, uh, writes a mantra and do, use it only when you're so depressed, discouraged, we say hopeless, life looks hopeless, then only open it. So this uh, uh, Dharmaraja, he kept it with him and he goes and he was in the exile. And they, even when they were in the forest, this Duryodhana is so bad, he sent them in the forest and they are in exile. He is not happy because he doesn't, these people, bad people, they are unhappy with even good people are even, they are happy. They mind their own business. These people are not happy. That is where a beautiful poem is there. Poison is in the head of a snake, right? When so it bites, it will bite. And poison in the tail of the scorpion. Bites will have, but the bad guy has top to bottom everything is <laughs> permeated by poison. So he is they will. So this guy is the one always whether they want to kill him, poison them, or they want to put them somehow. And so they even there he doesn't want to leave them alone. Then when time crisis came, you know what is this mantra? He opens and says, "A pudu under this this too shall pass." In life we can always see some crisis. We think, "My God." Whether it is sickness or some financial disaster, some problem, when will it end? It may happen. But after going back after a few years, oh, yeah, that went away. So, main thing is during the time of crisis, you need to have that forbearance, that sahana, that is a very important uh, virtue we need to have. So, thanks, Aravind, for the uh, comment. That is a very important uh, thing. So, that is, and then also remember, these two shall uh, pass. Yeah, actually, there is one one thing that he comments in this one that uh, you know, Drona is guru. So how can I fight? And if you really see, I would I would say that Lord Krishna wanted to give that Gita not only to Arjuna because you know, same on the opposite side, Drona and uh, Bhishma, they are also listening. They are with that they have that uh, you know devotion and. So he, they are able to he, uh, listen. In fact, the Bhishma, who we thinking, who is on the other side, he actually fought with Parasurama, his own guru. At one point of time, it, it, the situation happened that he had to fight. And he takes the blessing of Parasurama, his guru, and he goes back and fights, uh, fights with him. because it's, uh, And then they both of them don't win, and then they have to go back. They cannot win. Why I'm saying is that he didn't get the lesson, even though Bhishma is on the other side. They are ready to kill him. <laughs> they, yeah. they are, so it's more more to see that he doesn't think all that stuff. He just okay. Almost but anyway, time he, is up. Okay, anyway, we won't start. And we brought up about Bhishma and Drona. They are very good people, you know. Bhishma is called Shanta Bhakta. Lord Krishna loved him, and Krishna also loved him uh, so much. The problem is, that is why the famous Vishnu Sahasranamam, there are two things which are valuable in Mahabharata. Gita Nama Sahasram. One is Bhagavad Gita, that is this um, in Bhishma Parva. Another is Vishnu Sahasranamam. So here the Lord himself gives the message, Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu Sahasranamam is given by this great seer, master uh, Bhishma. Even though he was such a great man, because he was company of bad people. That is why Swami says, don't be in the company of bad people. Like same thing, Karna, same thing with Drona. Once you know something is adharma, they know they were disrobing. Draupadi, they sent them, obviously know what they are adharma. You should stand firm and resist. That is why Swami says, don't be like Bhishma, be like Vibhishna. Vibhishna knew that once his what his brother is doing wrong, he went to the enemy's party, Rama's party. Same thing, Vidura. He told they didn't listen. He went away on a pilgrimage. They have nothing to do with you. Kauravas, he was their main minister, chief minister. He have nothing to do with you guys. You are so bad. He uh, walks away. So when something is adharma, 
we should never be part of it. That is the problem of Bhishma. So this Bhishma, so he gives, so uh, Dharmaraja wanted some uh, message. Then Lord Krishna says, ask Bhishma. He, God himself, can keep up this. Bhishma says, I am on a bed of arrows. I am diving. My blood is coming out. I am so weak. Lord, why should I tell you? You are the there. He was standing there when he was giving the Vishnu Sasnam. He says, you have a man of wisdom. You went through that. So you should give one. Then that gives the more powerful. That is why Vishnu Sasnam is one of the powerful ways. Thousand names of Vishnu. And there, in the beginning, Bhishma says, I understand everything. Lord, you are on the side of Pandavas. You are right. You are always with them. You are family member. You are friend. Why they have to go through the so many sufferings? It is really mysterious. God is on the side of these Pandavas, but still in the world sense they have to go through that. Then Bhishma gives various dharmas that how to behave as a king, how to behave as a father, mother, friend. Then he asks, what is the highest dharma for anybody? We all have dharma, like you have a husband, or you are as a son for the father, as a father to the children, and as the employer to the employees, an employee for the employer. So all in life, we have different relations and different dharmas we all have to do. But what is the highest dharma? We all have to do the dharmas. He says, highest dharma is, Love the God with all the heart, soul, mind, and strength. That is the highest dharma for anybody. Highest dharma is love for God. That is what Bhishma, Yeshame Sarva Dharma Nam Dharma Dikatamomata. Highest dharma. That is why highest priority, Swami says, we need to give to God in our life. That is the priority. That is what even Jesus said. The way it is the greatest and first commandment love thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. This is the greatest commandment. So even Lord Jesus says, Swami says, and Bhishma also says that. So he should have that intense love and longing for God. So that is, that is why these people, even though they are that, they're all great. Bhishma is great. He has the power. Nobody else. Icham Gutyu. That means he can give up the body when he wants. Very few people, you can't, you, you never know next minute when, where you will be gone. But he had that Things. That is why he could wait till the Uttarayana, there is an auspicious period of time, he could leave the body. Even though so great man, just because of that one wrong attachment to the bad people, his whole life was ruined. Swami himself said, that is the greatest mistake. So we should always be careful the company we keep, with whom we associate. Otherwise, we will be getting into the same problem. So, if there are no more other comments, we'll continue next week instead of starting another chapter. Right? Anybody has any other comments? Okay, we'll continue next week. Sorry.